Okay, so the name of this video is Part 1, Bearhawk Certification and Phase 1 Flight Testing. This is really the reason why I started this channel was because I really couldn't find anything that told me or gave me instructions on how to prepare for the airworthiness inspection and certificate uh, and just general notes on what to do while you're building your amateur built airplane and uh, what are the things that you need, paperwork, documents. So I put together some things here I wanted to share with everyone. Uh, really these are just resources that you can find on your own but th this is just a good start on the pre-certification, the preparing for the phase one flight testing, uh, some of the pre-flight, pre-engine start, pre-taxi uh, things that I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm just going to jump right into some of these things that are available. So one of the first things I picked up was this step-by-step uh, -step certification guide. This is from the EAA, and it really is a step-by-step -step on preparing for certification. It literally has check boxes beside each of the items that you need to complete before you can... Uh, have your certification performed uh, and here are some things that I've already taken care of. I have the aircraft registration and I've actually have two because I changed my address since I first bought the kit so uh, I had a change of address notification form in here and so this step-by-step -step certification book is just invaluable. Also about three years ago I guess it was the EAA put together uh, a flight test manual and I think this is just a result of, you know, when you do your phase one flight testing, they require you to do either 25 or 40 hours of solo uh, flight testing. You can't carry any passengers until you complete that time. 25 hours if your engine is a certified built engine, 40 hours if your engine is experimental. So another great publication for the uh, flight testing this is what I'm going to follow and you're going to see this book throughout much of the following videos that I'm putting together. Uh, really just starting with the fuel flow test, the engine run and taxi test, first flight, uh, gear and flap operation, uh, everything. This book covers everything and it's very easy to carry this book. Certain uh, phases of flying. So this is a great book. And then this is just kind of a the narration or the summary of everything that uh, this book. Uh, flight these flight test cards cover the FAA puts out a document called the uh, amateur built aircraft and ultralight flight testing handbook that's uh, AC 90-89B uh, another great read uh, for everything you could think of about preparing for your first flight and uh, phase one flying this book and other books like this is another example of the things that you just didn't know. You know what they say, the old saying, you don't know what you don't know. Well, when you read through this stuff, you're going to find things that you just didn't think about or didn't know. Uh, so it's really advisable to read this stuff cover to cover. In terms of my own organizational uh, afflictions, uh, I put together another book called The Airworthiness Inspection Documents for this airplane. And I'm just taking everything that we've done and performed. For example, I have a weight and balance, empty weight here, first flight weight and balance, fuel flow testing, uh, different ways to perform the fuel flow testing. Uh, and so different things that I'm going to be recording or documenting, I'm just going to put this in a singular uh, point of reference in this book here. So now let's talk about pre-first flight, pre first engine startup, uh, just some of the things that need to happen as we're working towards this airworthiness certification and uh, just things that need to be done. For example, I put together what's called a uh, pre-flight first or pre-first flight tasks and notes. So what could possibly be in here? So it's just an accumulation of things I've picked up over the past three years as I've been building the airplane. Uh, here's something here that came from Kit Planes Magazine, preparing for your first flight great article uh, something that I'd probably need to read through here's something I may have missed or may have not thought about as things just become overwhelming I have Grove brakes or Grove brake system on my Bearhawk and so this is just a set of instructions for installing the brakes uh, breaking in the rotors and seating the brake pads so 
you don't think about that, but that's something that needs to be done before you start taxiing your airplane around. So I put this in my notes. Uh, here's something here on Avidyne. I have an IFD 540 navigator. It's a WAS navigator. I need to call this phone number to, to start my warranty. So I, you know, these are just things that I may have forgotten. I put together uh, so I wouldn't forget. This is just something as I'm setting up my Dynon Ethos. What will be the V speeds for the flaps? So this is just instructions on flaps. Before engine start. When am I going to run my boost pump? When am I going to turn off my boost pump? Installation instructions for the tailwheel uh, adjustable spring connector assembly. More on the uh, Dynon Skyview HDX re resetting the total flight time so I don't pick up time that I was just running the, the Dynon while it was sitting in the garage. Uh, fuel limits, uh, PFD setup, air speeds, you know, VX, VY, VA, VNE, um, all these things that need to be taken care of on the, the Dynon. Uh, here's a checklist of fuselage to do things that I need to take care of. Uh, here's another one that has to do with avionics, the transponder and the ADSB. Uh, I got a name the other day of a person I can call who can actually come out to me and he can calibrate and uh, test and get my, my ADSB and transponder set up. Tensioning the flying wires. Uh, so on the tail section of the airplane, we have flying wires, and so I need to know how to tension those correctly, so I've got those set up. Now here are, uh, for example, rigging the cables for the ailerons and the elevator. Uh, 20 pounds on the aileron, 30 pounds on the elevator is what is advised. Here's the fuel selector, just an example of what the fuel selector does if I ever need to take care of anything on the fuel selector. ELT, I'm going to have to get my... Uh, emergency locator transmitter set up and this is the ELT stuff. Oh, my upholstery. I had a local guy do the uh, seats for me as well as the carpet and this is just a certificate of flaming, certificate of flammability testing. So I suppose this needs to be uh, recorded and maintained somewhere. So as I start thinking about starting the engine, I have a few things I need to take, uh, take into consideration. Well, Airflow Performance is the manufacturer of the fuel injection system on the Lycoming IO540. So Airflow Performance has a complete installation and service manual. There's also a start checklist in here. We have torque settings on installing their system. Uh, inlet filter, so there'll be an inlet filter that, that's on the servo that will need to be uh, serviced and maintained. We, we will actually take that out before the first flight so we'll do some engine starting, we'll do some taxi testing, probably have, I'm going to probably have about an hour and a half or two hours on that engine just on the ground. And prior to flying it, I'm going to take all the fuel filters out and clean and service them. So here is that manual for the uh, airflow performance system. Lycoming, this is the IO540 Lycoming Operator's Manual. And uh, again, I've just got basic things in here that show me uh, magnetos and timing. Uh, what are the pre-start uh, instructions? What are the operating conditions for, let's say, uh, at certain RPMs? How much, how much horsepower can I expect to see? How much fuel consumption in gallons per hour can I expect to see? Um, just lots of good things here I'm going to take care of. Uh, engine break-in, uh, lubricating oil, uh, removing the um, preservative oil, which we've already done that, but th these are all good things here. Oh, here's something that just fell out of here. This is from TS Flight Lines. I uh, had all my fuel lines and oil lines uh, fabbed up and Put together and built by Tom Swergen over at TS Flight Lines, and so this just this is just a copy of all the lengths and the different sizes I used for that. Uh, just more stuff. I picked up a um, this book here from Pilot Workshops. It's called Airplane Engines: A Pilot Friendly Manual: How to Get the Most Performance, Dependability, and Longevity from Your Engine. Can't hurt to keep learning about engines and uh, how to operate your engine, maintain it what to look for in all phases of flight. So uh, just another good book I picked up there. So let's talk about flying the Bearhawk for the first time. Uh, prior to flying, I'm going to actually do a Bearhawk transition training program. Jared Yates uh, has put this program together, and I'm very fortunate that Jared just lives right up the road from me. He's up in Hickory. In fact, I met with him Sunday 
uh, he came down to the hangar and went through the Bearhawk with me, and uh, we spent quite a bit of time just talking airplanes and Bearhawks. But uh, Jared is a great guy. He's put together this transition training program. Uh, we cannot do, people have asked me about this, uh, can you just go, in fact, even the insurance companies have asked me, why don't you just get uh, 10 hours of dual instruction for your Bearhawk so we can get you, get you your insurance? Well, you can't do dual instruction or you can't do flight instructing in an experimental aircraft. Um, and it's just basically a transition program. So you have an experienced pilot or an experienced builder of a specific type of, of an experimental airplane who's put together a syllabus and just the things that you're going to do. Introduction to Bearhawk characteristic, uh, descript, uh, description of the lessons. Uh, this program includes three lessons. Uh, each of these lessons is intended to advance the progress of the training program and while each may be completed in a single session, they may also be spread out over several sessions and just this is just a great uh, here we got ground school um, or ground lessons um, positive aircraft control positive exchange of the flight control procedures stall and spin awareness collision avoidance wake turbulence um, great I mean this is a three-hour program that Jared put together uh, I'm definitely going to take this it certainly Jared's airplane is actually a four-place Bearhawk like mine uh, the only real difference is, is his is an A model, mine is a B model, his has the 180 horsepower carbureted engine, I've got a 275 horsepower fuel injected engine. So uh, difference in power or difference in power plants, but uh, the airplanes are very, very similar. So this is going to be a great program to take um, and I look forward to that. One area I think a lot of people are not aware of, we talk about doing the phase one flight testing before you can carry passengers. So I think a lot of people assume that means nobody's gonna get in the airplane with you until after you've completed either the 25 or the 40 hours of phase one flight testing. However, you can take somebody with you on your first flight and throughout your phase one flight testing. In fact, the FAA has the AC 90-116, and this is the additional pilot program for phase one flight test. Uh, the purpose of this advisory is to provide information and guidance on the additional pilot program for flight testing experimental aircraft. The APP was developed to improve safety by enhancing builder, owner, pilot skills and mitigate risk associated with phase one flight testing of aircraft built from commercially produced kits through the use of a qualified additional pilot power and power plant testing. So uh, you're going to meet Mikey Matthews. Uh, I have been actually flying with Mikey uh, for, gosh, over two years now in his decathlon, just keeping my tailwheel training. I have about 150 hours of uh, logged tailwheel flying. Mikey is going to be my, my APP for this. Mikey has, I guess, well over 9,000 total hours. He has almost 4,000 hours of tailwheel time, so uh, Mikey's the right guy. Uh, our first flight should be really pretty uneventful. In fact, one of the items that uh, the flight test manual talks about here is they really suggest that uh, you, you visualize yourself on that first flight. It should not come as a surprise or a rushed or uh, let's uh, jump in the airplane and go right now sort of thing. Uh, this should be a non-event to the point where you get, you're get you going to get in the airplane and it's almost like in a normal day of flying. So uh, there shouldn't be any anxiety or concerns or really be uh, worked up about anything. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is the first video of all of the airworthiness and phase one flight testing. I'm going to create a separate playlist just for these videos and some of the upcoming videos that you can expect uh, coming forward are going to be the Part two, which is going to be the fuel flow test. Uh, that video is coming up here in the next day or so. Then part three is going to be the first engine start. You will actually see, we'll record the engine. And we'll try to do shots from inside the cabin and outside. Another video will be the troubleshooting after the engine startup. Uh, if we have any issues with the engine, we'll do videos on what we did to resolve those issues. I'm going to put a camera inside the cabin, hopefully behind me somewhere that can see the instrument panel uh, and also ride along on some of the taxi testing. So 
Uh, and these are these are just things I've been looking for on YouTube and not able to find anything. And you know, you see a guy that does his first flight and his wife is holding her iPhone wrong. And so you get the long skinny video and it's 45 seconds of this guy taking off and that's the end of his first flight. We, we want to be a little more in depth and hopefully bring some more uh, information to really help people understand this process. Uh, and then hopefully here in the next, uh, this is going to probably, a lot of videos are going to come out in a very short period of time. Uh, hopefully about a week to 10 days from now. I will be ordering the airworthiness inspection. Uh, I don't have to use a DAR here, a designated uh, airworthiness representative. I think that's what DAR stands for. Uh, I'm going to have the FISDO, the Charlotte FISDO FAA. I've already been in contact with them. In fact, they've already sent me things here to uh, work on and references that they're going to be uh, working from while they do the inspection. So been in contact with the FISDO. They said if I give them three or so days notice that they can come on out and do my airworthiness uh, inspection. So that's really it. This is kind of a boring video. We're not in a hangar today. We're sitting here at my table and we're going through paperwork. But uh, this is a big part of the process. Uh, I, I have just, I've been putting it off going through the paperwork, but uh, got my notes organized and looking forward to putting out more videos for you on the rest of our phase one flight testing and airworthiness certification. Thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe, uh, share this with your friends and I look forward to talking with you soon. Mm -hmm.